Lone Rider here, and I want to talk about these. Now, pretty much everybody knows that there's a problem with uh, people being distracted by cell phones, um, either you know making a, just a nuisance of themselves, or in some cases actually being uh, dangerous and breaking the law, such as people stepping in front of traffic while they're on the cell phone, or driving their car while they're on the cell phone, and you know run, running a, a stop sign or something. Um, that aspect of it is obviously something that I've noticed more than others because I bike a lot. So, you know, yeah, your, your, your close calls on a bike are a lot scarier than in a car. So you're going to notice things that affect road safety more. But I think even other drivers will agree that it's a known problem. The behaviors become almost ubiquitous. But the question becomes, why is that? And, and I've pointed out, you know, many times that uh, the mere ownership of a cell phone uh, or a smartphone, as in the case of most people nowadays, you'll notice mine, mine is a dumb phone. I don't have a smartphone. I never had a smartphone. But um, I do own a cell phone. I've never used it while I'm driving. I've never used it while crossing the street. I've never used it in a situation where my use of it would distract me from something that would make me dangerous to myself or others. I just, I've never done that, literally. Um, why? Well, as a cyclist who has been hit by cars, it's important to me to be careful on the road because I know what happens when somebody isn't. Um, and maybe that's just it. Maybe I'm just more cognizant conceptually of the danger that this poses. But that can't be the only reason, right? I mean... There has to be, why is it that some people can be responsible with one of these and some people aren't? And I honestly think it doesn't have anything to do with whether you own a cell phone or perhaps even a smartphone. Although I think if you own a smartphone, it's more likely that you're going to be irresponsible. Why? Because I think the difference between people who can put this away in their pocket and not use it all the time and people who feel compelled to check the cell phone even when they're going through a red light, which is why they're going through a red light, because they're not paying attention. Um, I think that difference is that some people are on social media and some people aren't, right? I don't have Twitter, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, any of this crap. I, I've never had, I, I don't, uh, I don't have it. Um, so what do I use my cell phone for? Well, if I want to call somebody or if somebody wants to call me, or if I want to text somebody, or if somebody wants to text me. Uh, it also takes pictures. So if I'm out riding my bike and I see like a really cool sunset or something uh, on the way home, I can, you know, take a picture of it. That's all it does. So I really have no reason to be constantly on this thing, unless I'm just talking to people all the time, which, you know, most of the people I know have things to do. I'm not going to be on the phone with them all the time. I might occasionally call them, I might occasionally text them, or vice versa. They may call or text me. But I'm not going to be on the phone 24-7 like talking to somebody. Uh, pretty much everybody I know also has a life, as do I. So I'm not going to be just, you know, sitting on this thing all day, talking to people. Similarly with texting. I mean, I occasionally I get a text, occasionally I send one. I'm not doing it all the time. So I really have no reason that I can't, as a pragmatic matter, whether or not I was conscious of the danger of distracting myself with it. Just as a pragmatic matter, I have no reason to be on this while I'm driving or walking or, or whatever. Why? Because what I use it for are three very basic things, and they're not something that you're going to be doing constantly. However, if you're on social media, you're going to be constantly checking updates, likes, etc., messages, tweets, twits, whatever they're called. And... Um, for something like that, you're going to be, you know, constantly checking those. So I think the difference between people who are irresponsible with these and people who are responsible with them are the people that the people, the more you're engaged with social media, the more likely you are to be one of those people who can't put the damn phone down and they're using it while they're walking or driving or whatever to the endangerment of themselves and everyone around them. And this is why I said earlier that I think um, it's not necessarily whether or not you own a cell phone or even a smartphone, but
But if you do own a, a, a smartphone rather than just a cell phone, I do think it makes you more likely to abuse it. Why? Because a phone like this isn't really useful for going on social media. I don't think I've ever used this to go on the Internet. I mean, I probably could, but I, I, I don't. Um, if you have a smartphone, they're designed to be Internet portals. So it's more likely that you're going to use it for that. And that's why I said, if you have a smartphone, rather than just a regular old cell phone, it's more likely that you're going to be abusing it because the, the device is almost designed to enable that. What's the point of a portable internet portal that you can carry with you everywhere, from the beach to the hiking trail to the behind the wheel of your car? If not to, in fact, be on the internet everywhere, from the beach to the hiking trail to, well, you're behind the wheel of your car. It, it seems to me almost that's what it's designed for. And while we obviously can't blame an inanimate, inanimate object like the cell phone um, any more than we could blame, you know, a pen when somebody uses it to write a libelous statement, or any more than we could blame, you know, a car or a bottle of whiskey when somebody gets drunk and crashes. Uh, yes, this is an inanimate object, but uh, while we, we're not going to blame the cell phone for anything, uh, I do think we have to acknowledge that the cell phone companies are essentially trying to normalize this behavior. They're, you know, there's multi-million dollar ad campaigns out there focused on one thing and one thing only, which is to to convince people that this is, is, is and should be the new normal. Ironically, at the same time as people in the general public are so alarmed by how careless folks on cell phones are, especially on the roads, that at the same time as tech companies are spending millions of dollars to convince people to be on these things all the time, 24-7, lawmakers are being pressured and have been pressured in the past to pass laws making it against the law to do so while you're, let's say, driving, because there's a concern about pe people committing a vehicular homicide. So... I, I don't think we can ignore the context of that. It's almost as if the newer ones, the, especially the, the advanced uh, smartphones, are designed to enable reckless behavior. That said, it's still your choice whether or not you do that, right? There's plenty of people who advertise things that aren't good for you. Junk food, um, you know, uh, 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 all, all sorts of stuff. Uh, you know, the... the Online gambling and off-track betting comes to mind. They recently started doing more gambling in New Jersey. They legalized certain sports betting. And every, it seems every time that somebody has the news on, and I, I don't watch that much TV, but if I happen to be in a room and the TV's on, every other commercial lately seems to be, at least during the evening news hour, for off-track betting. And it's like, oh, yeah, people are going to start getting in a lot of trouble because of that. But if they do, it's their fault, right? I mean, you're you're choosing to participate. You can't blame the casino for existing. It's it's your fault if you aren't responsible with that and you squander your savings. Same thing. You can't blame the cell phone for the fact that people are irresponsible with it. Any more can you can blame the gun when somebody robs a liquor store or the car when somebody gets drunk and runs a stop sign. But if there were car companies telling you that it's okay and socially acceptable to run stop signs, then you could blame them. You couldn't blame the car, but you could blame them. If there were gun companies saying, hey, rob the local liquor store, man. That's what your gun's for. You could blame them for that, even though you couldn't blame the actual item itself. Obviously, these things aren't the case. No gun manufacturer is encouraging people to commit crime. No car manufacturer is encouraging people to drive drunk or run stop signs. But cell phone manufacturers and cell phone providers are encouraging people to use these things to the point where it does become a dangerous distraction in situations like when they're behind the wheel. Uh, there is a concerted effort being made, I think, to try and normalize this behavior at the same time as many people are trying to point out it's dangerous. But I think at the end of the day, the difference between the person who's responsible for one of these and the person who isn't is that the person who is most likely to be irresponsible is the person who's most fully engaged with social media. And the reason is that they have a reason to be on the cell phone all the time. Again, I've always been shocked. 
I'm not on the cell phone when I'm driving. I never do that. I never have. Why can't other people do that? Are they stupid? I mean, I'm not Superman. If I can refrain from doing it, why can't they? Well, the thing is, what they're using their cell phone for is very different than what I'm using mine for, right? I'm using mine to take or receive phone calls or text messages, and that's pretty much it. They're using this to go on the Internet. And, of course, when they're doing that, a lot of times they're on social media, which demands your constant attention because the situation and the, the status of your social media is going to be constantly updating and changing. Now, I'm not trying to blame social media for people being cell phone zombies or dumbasses or running stop signs and killing a family of four. But the thing is, if you want to solve a problem, you have to look at why it is it's occurring. And there is a problem in this country with when I'm driving down the street and I'm stuck behind somebody who's going 20 miles an hour in a 45 mile an hour zone and thinks that that's normal. The only reason they're doing it is because they're on the phone and they're distracted. But that's not normal, okay? In fact, that kind of discrepancy between your, the speed of your vehicle and the posted speed on the road is sufficient to get you pulled over on suspicion of being drunk, right? Similarly, somebody is driving and they're going too fast because they don't know what the speed is because they're distracted and they haven't looked up and seen the posted uh, speed limit on the, on the road. Um, that's not normal or safe either. And similarly, if you're looking down at your phone and you don't see that there's a stop sign there or some poor old lady crossing the street, same thing. These things are not normal. They're a danger and they're an everyday problem because we all use the roads every day. Never mind other situations where people using cell phones uh, is a growing menace, essentially. Um... So there is a problem with this behavior. It's not something the rest of us should have to, you know, if I have both eyes open and I'm paying attention and I'm traveling at the posted speed or around thereabouts on the road and I'm stopping for the traffic control devices and I'm staying in lane and I'm stopping for the old lady crossing the street and I'm not hitting anybody with my car. That's what you're supposed to do, okay? It doesn't make you above normal it doesn't make you exceeding the standard that is the bare minimum standard you're simply obeying the rules all of these people that are on the cell phone they're not exercising the bare minimum of care needed to safely and legally operate their automobiles they might as well be drunk off their arse excuse my language and so there is a problem with this now, not everybody in a cell phone is going to be as dangerous as everybody else. But you could say the same thing is about drunks, right? Not every drunk is going to be as dangerous as every other drunk. But they're all more dangerous than an alert, competent driver. And that's the thing. I do also think, um, to, to make a direct comparison to drunk driving, how interesting it is that like the advanced alcoholic, there are many people who figure they can handle it when it comes to talking or texting or going on Facebook or whatever while they're driving their car, right? They can handle it. Yeah. We've all known somebody who said that and sooner or later crashed into a post, right? Because they thought they could handle their, their Jim Beam or whatever the hell it was. It's no different nowadays with the cell phones or the smartphones, as the case may be. And I, like I said, the difference between the people who are using this all the time to the point where they, they think nothing of using it while they're driving and endangering everybody around them, um, they're the moral equivalent of, um, if you could imagine somebody going out into a public park with a shotgun and a blindfold on and spinning around and randomly discharging their shotgun to the four points of the compass, with their blindfold on and their eyes closed. That's the level of random carelessness that somebody behind the wheel on a cell phone poses to everybody around them. They literally might as well be shooting into public with their eyes closed because they're not paying attention to where they're directing that car. Um, they're the, the practical and moral equivalent of anybody else 
who literally doesn't care where they're pointing a weapon or a potential weapon. So why do they do it? Presumably these people aren't bad. Presumably they're not sociopaths. Presumably they don't want to hurt anybody. Presumably they don't want to hurt themselves. So why do they engage in this behavior? They fully committed themselves to social media to the point where their virtual life is more important than the actual lives of people in front of their face, including themselves and their own family. Right? Who would make the, ra the rational choice, rationally? To say it's more important I check my Facebook account than make sure I don't kill somebody and go to prison for manslaughter and then my family grows up without a father or a husband or, 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 or a mother or a father. Right? Who would say it's more important I check my Facebook account than I step into the street and get hit by a bus and die and then, again, my family has to grow up without a parent or, you know, whatever. Nobody who's rational would make that choice. But these people, rationality applies to what? Well, rationality in reference to the real world risks. If your parameters have been set, or if you've set your own parameters to the point where your primary concern is the virtual world, then that bus literally isn't even on your radar. Not just in terms of you seeing it, because you're distracted, but in terms of you even thinking of it as an issue before it enters your potential field of vision, right? Why? Because you're so into your social media. And I think that's the difference. I can go through my entire life thus far. I got, first got a cell phone when I was in college. I've been out of college for many years. I have never used one of these while driving my car. Why can't other people do that? Again, what do I use it for? Something very different from what the people who use it all the time while they're driving are using it for. And, and what's the difference? They have smartphones, and more importantly, they're using those smartphones to go on social media constantly. And I guess I really have to wonder about the priorities of some people. But again, if you're trying to solve the problem, if you want to live in a world with increasing, increasingly incompetent and dangerous people all around you, where you never know if a trip to the grocery store could end in your death or dismemberment because somebody else was literally too stupid to look up and out the windshield, then by all means, don't bother to ask any impertinent questions and give up on the idea of getting a pertinent answer. But if you really want to solve a problem, you have to look at what's causing it. And it obviously can't be the mere presence of cell phones or even smartphones because plenty of people have them and don't use them when they're behind the wheel for example. But an alarmingly number of people do. And again, the difference could be many things. But the one factor I see that's different is people like myself, who aren't on the phone all the time, are also not involved with social media. And so maybe you should look at your social media use and, you know, hey, if you want to go to jail for manslaughter, that's your thing. But I'd like to think we all want to live in a world where people are more responsible and more careful and more productive and more, you know, maybe a little focused on reality, right, rather than make-believe. And um, the reality is, however important that Facebook like is to you, if you get hit by a bus or kill somebody and go to jail, yeah, that's a big problem for you and other people. So wouldn't you rather avoid all that unpleasantness? Even if it means waiting a little longer to check your Facebook? I would think so. But then again, you know, I've gone days without using this thing. So, Lone Rider out.